Welcome to a teardown of continuous glucose monitors, or CGMs. We're going to tear down one from Dexcom and one from Abbott. The Dexcom unit comes with an applicator. Uh, I haven't used this one, so I'm not as good at it, but this is the actual device. It's the applicator sticks it to your skin and a small needle or wire goes into your skin under your skin, uh, it's, that's actually the sensor. The electronics mounts on that device right here. And what we're going to do today is focus on the electronics and tear this down. Here's the Abbott device. The sensor comes in this package and it is now mounted to the applicator. You push this against the skin and it applies this part right here. Uh, okay, so I pull it out. Uh, this is the adhesive, and you may be able to see a little tiny wire, which is the same as the Dexcom. That wire goes into the skin, and that's the sensor. Uh, so they're they're not truly non-invasive, but they're pretty close. That wire doesn't cause pain. I'm told. I haven't used these. And so this is the device we're going to tear down for the Abbott device. to remove the adhesive from the Abbott CGM. Uh, a little sticky. And what do you know, it's actually transparent and you can look inside. Uh, the next step is to pry this apart. Uh, we'll pause for a moment and I'll open it up and we'll look inside. <laughs> Okay, I have sawed around the edges to release the, the, glued, the glue on the plastic. First, I'm going to pry out this plastic piece around the sensor. So, there's the sensor. And it has three contacts on that little plastic piece. And those three contacts go to three contacts on the circuit board. Now let's try prying off the cover. It's going to take a little more work. You can stop for now. Okay, I have pried away a number of places where it attaches and I remove the clear cover and now we can look at the parts on the circuit board. There's one round circuit board. You can immediately see the battery. There's a chip here and we'll pause and I'll give you some more information. So inside, the basic, uh, well, almost all the smarts and everything that's happening is done in this chip. This is a TI RF430. It has a, an NFC interface for communication. It's got, and, and that NFC interface connects to an antenna, which if you look carefully, runs around the edge of the board. There are wires running around three times. That's the NFC antenna. NFC works at a distance of one or two inches. So you put a device, it could be your cell phone. Uh, this does work with cell phones. It could be the device that comes that uh, Abbott supplies. Uh, and that picks up the signal and, and gives you the measurement. The 
chip also has a three analog inputs. One of them is used to measure the glucose. Now, glucose is normally measured with a capacitance, uh, and that implies that you have an AC signal. Uh, the A to D converter is going to measure DC, and what I haven't been able to figure out is, in this section here, they've got some just a few passive components, and somehow the, I'm assuming this is capacitive sensor, uh, but they're able to pick it up directly into the processor, uh, into this chip. So that part's a little unclear. There, over here, we have what appears to be a temperature sensor, and it's connected to a pin which is typically used as a temperature input. It appears like a, a thermistor, and they specify it as a thermistor input. So what we have is a thermistor, and that's normally down like this, where it's pressed against the, the side of the package that goes against the skin. So that's a pretty good way to measure skin temperature. It's not perfect because it's got the plastic between it and the skin, but uh, this, its main goal is not to measure temperature. I, I don't know what they use the temperature for, but I'm guessing one thing they would check is if the temperature is not close to body temperature, then it probably isn't properly attached. Uh, the rest of the components here are just passive components besides the battery. Uh, there's resistors and capacitors, very tiny ones. And these are the pins, there's three pins here where the sensor connects that we disconnected earlier. That's the three pins here. So that's the whole thing. It's fairly simple once you open it up. So I've now opened the Dexcom G6. Uh, it was more difficult. The plastic is molded around the circuit board. So when I pried it away, it came out in various pieces and one chip came off the board. But that's still okay, I can take it from here. Now let's zoom in on the board. Basic part on the Nord on this is a Nordic chip. It's a Nordic NRF52832, which has Bluetooth LE or Bluetooth Low Energy Communication. And as with Abbott, it's a processor and it has IOs and, an an and analog inputs. Uh, so this one you're going to pick up with a Bluetooth LE device. Obviously your phone can do that. Uh, there's a custom chip here, which you can no longer see. And it appears that the custom chip by its location is the interface for the sensor. The sensor is connected through these two pins. And so it's being picked up on this side. And it looks like the custom chip is the sensor interface. Uh, and there's probably a temperature sensor on here. Uh, the, the way this was taken apart, I'm unclear on that. Uh, but I'm guessing there is. So the functions are pretty much the same as the Abbott device, except for the type of communication. We've completed our teardown of the Abbott Freestyle Libre and the Dexcom G6 continuous glucose monitors. Thank you very much for joining us today.